thing, everyone. And here we are. Well, we're the kind of last day of the last day, aren't we? So it was the last day yesterday with Carol. And hopefully you all watched and had a very good laugh at me. Try, Carol, poor Carol, trying to teach me how to paint with watercolours, which I haven't done since I was about six. And it was quite funny because she had this analogy. Obviously, it was right in the middle of lockdown when she was doing, we were recording this workshop and she was teaching me how to do watercolour. And all I had was the kids watercolour palettes from school <laughs> and um, some paintbrushes that had been left over in the cupboard and some watercolour paper, which was a miracle. I don't know where I found that. And she had this amazing analogy. She was like, it's trying to play golf with like spoons. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't do it. So, yeah, it's fun. I hope you all enjoyed watching that one yesterday. So today is our closing ceremony and we have Anna from Attic Teas with us. Hello, Anna. And your partner? He's See, not here at the moment. He's uh, out buying dinner, but I'll drag him in to say hello to everyone. Out buying dinner. Good man. <laughs> so we're live streaming onto Facebook and to YouTube. So anyone watching us over there and you want to come over here, Sophie will have put a, a link in for you so you can hop over here and be live. And the advantages of being live, obviously you can ask your questions directly. Otherwise, hang out in Facebook. You've got subtitles over there. And sometimes that's quite an advantage because <laughs> we do speak quite quickly. So yeah, there's a, subtitles in Facebook and YouTube. So that, that does help. And we do have some people in the community who are hard of hearing. So again, that's quite a good place for them to be. But do pop your questions in and Sophie will bring them across. Before I l hand literally the evening over to uh, Anna, I'm just going to share the screen with for one last time with our beautiful magazine, and we can look at Anna's page. There we go. So there's our magazine. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. There we go. And we've got Attic Tees. There we go. And Anna was just saying how impressed she was with the magazine. Very, very, very impressive. And the quality of all the artists. Yeah. Yeah, in good company, in good company. So if you haven't bought your tea set yet or you were a bit late, um, oh, Griselda's got a tea ready, um, or you want to buy more, then all you do is you go onto the contact area. So you've got the email, you've got the website, got Facebook, and you've got Instagram. So after this, if anyone wants to contact Anna, then you can. It's quite easy. There are all the links. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Anna, who's going to take us through the whole tea making ceremony. And it's going to end with a guided meditation. Is that correct? It is indeed. <clears throat> Brilliant. Right. I'm going to give you the screen. and I'm going to sit down in the corner. I promise I won't go to sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. And uh, welcome, everybody who's come tonight. Um, I apologise, I've not used this platform before, so um, please do ask questions um, and I will try and keep an eye out for them. But um, yeah, um, uh, if you have to pop them in the chat too to make sure, get my attention, then do. And I'll do my best to answer them as we go along. Um, I'll keep an eye out for questions as well. Oh, yeah, thanks, Leslie. And to be honest, um, although I know it has been called a ceremony, we've kind of created our own we call it a tea circle really because it is a mix of, of really a tea tasting so we are going to try some teas today um and also and so it has a health bias like we're going to look at um how tea helps our day-to-day -day health and well-being but it also um we are going to look at how it connects us to practice um and something as artists i'm sure you'll really appreciate the kind of space it puts, it can put you in, um, in terms of uh, harnessing your creativity. So hopefully you will enjoy the guided meditation at the end as well. Just briefly, um, we are gonna be making tea. So don't worry, uh, each tea takes a little while to brew up. So if you have to go off to your kitchen to get the water, it's absolutely fine. I'll give you time to, to fill up your pots and we'll go through how to use the um, equipment. 
You will need all the samples and the tea maker, but you'll also need a mug because obviously the tea maker is just what we brew the tea in and then we put it on top of a mug to drink it out of. So that's the stuff you'll need. I do also find it's quite useful um, as we go along if any of you have a notepad and pen because when we're tasting, it's quite easy to forget what each of them, what you liked or disliked about each of them. So sometimes people like to just jot notes down as they go along because obviously you're going to do them in a series. You might forget what the first one was like. Um, also, a lot of people like to journal meditation at the end. So um, it's quite good just to have a pen and paper in case that sort of suits you. So just to give you a little overview of what we're going to cover today, we are going to introduce a tea plant, obviously, and a little bit of um, relevant history. Really, because um, we only work with Chinese tea, so it's quite interesting to, to look at why that is so. Um, we also, sorry, Rick. Yeah. Um, those who are wondering if you'd come in and just say hi. Oh, yeah. Rick's just back from the shops buying my dinner, so he's just going to pop in and say hi. Right. Um, but also, we're going to um, obviously brew up the teas and experience the different tastes and the way that you make, make you feel. This is my partner, Rick. Looking a little bit. Hi, Rick. It's lovely to see both of you. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll put this in the back. Okay. Um, can you still hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to, so we're going to try the teas and um, really not just taste them, but start to maybe start to notice where you feel them in your body, how they make you feel. Because actually when you connect with the right tea for you, it will have a quite somatic effect as well as just, hmm, it tastes quite nice. Um, and we're going to also be, like I said, looking at how um, tea helps us manage stress and anxiety and keep our bodies more healthy and finish with the guided visualization. So hopefully you'll go away feeling, probably all, you'll probably all be ready to go to bed at the end. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to start really with um, looking at why um, tea became my work in the first place. Um, many decades ago, I, I am a, uh, was a snowboarder for many, many years and had a lot of quite serious injuries. And um, so I started to just practice yoga in a bid really to um, improve my day to day my body was quite creaky already by that, that time. And what I noticed is when you start to pay attention to one aspect of your life like that, it, you start to notice it, how it affects every part of your life. So from what you eat to um, you know, where you source your clothes from to ev everything started to fire off once I started to p take a little bit better care of myself. And I became really interested in proactive approaches to staying healthy um, from things like the benefits of relaxation and sleep to good nutrition and initially that's why I was drawn to green tea because back then you know it was the thing that was really good for you and it was only available in tea bags it wasn't particularly pleasant to drink but I was like oh yeah I'm going to drink this it's exactly what I want in my life and um Interestingly, around the same time, my, my mum's actually Chinese, so um, we went on a family trip to China, and in my head I was like, well, that'd be quite fun, I, you know, I'll be able to find some proper green tea, as obviously that's where it's from. And the experience of, 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 the experience of tea in China is something that, that totally blew me away. I wasn't really expecting that at all. Um, I got taken by um, the lady who's still our tea buyer today uh, to the Chinese tea markets in Shanghai. And they were probably the size of like 20 football pitches, um, enormous. And inside are all these just tiny little tea shacks that you just go in and drink tea with the, with the producers until you find the teas that you want to buy. And they have such a loving relationship to tea and the way they drink it and it's so intrinsic to their culture and I just I just loved watching you know the way they refresh the same leaves all day and and how everyone just looks really healthy you know everyone's doing tai chi in the park and drinking tea and they're all like 95 and look about 20 and I just felt like oh there's something in this and um I literally filled my backpack full of tea 
headed home. And um, along with Rick, my partner, we created ATIC, which is an acronym for all the tea in China, uh, back in 2006, so 15 years ago. And we initially opened a tea bar in Bristol. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit of, I'm just going to screen share, a little bit of the tea history because it helps um, it helps un uh, explain why we've ended up um, again, only working with Chinese tea. So firstly, when we're talking about tea today, I am just talking about one plant, the Camellia sinensis. I'm going to show you a picture because I recently was on a course and we were talking about how none of us really know what the plants look like we eat because we were talking about rice and not one of us actually knew what a rice plant looked like. So I thought I'd show you, this is actually what the tea plant looks like, the Camellia sinensis. And it's not to be confused with our umbrella use of the word tea, which is really for any hot drink made by infusing leaves, whether it's mint or chamomile or ginger. Um, when I'm talking about tea today, I'm just talking about this one plant. And recently, forestry workers uh, found this rich source of ancient botanical fossils outside the town of Pu'e in Yunnan province in China. And this area is thought to be the birthplace of tea. And they think these fossils are about 35 million years old and direct ancestors to this plant, the Camellia sinensis. And it sort of just goes to show how ancient the plant is and how powerful and lengthy its lineage is. And kind of is no wonder that the Chinese always set it apart as such a sacred plant above all others. And really how it's become the world's most sought after drink. It's so interwoven into the journey of humanity that it's kind of very intrinsic to, it's, it's a part of who we are. And it has always been throughout the ages used, it's been the plant medicine of choice for monks and mystics um, throughout the ages. And its unique nutrients were always thought to not only keep people strong and fortify them for their long hours of toiling on the land or, or sitting in temple, but they always knew it, that it, it helped give them great insight and wisdom because it helped open the mind to, um, to these sorts of practices. And so it's always been thought to help bridge the gap between the spirit world and the material world, the magical and the mundane. And interestingly, when we look at tea now in our country, and we will go back onto that now, um, we've kind of, it has become quite a mundane use of it in terms of we just drink it all day, don't really think about drinking it. And so hopefully you will come away today with a slightly different relationship with the tea plant. But I also think nourishing and protecting our physical and mental, emotional and spiritual health, which is something that the tea really helps with, is just as potent a tool today as it always was. So um, be interesting to see how you find this experience. So funnily enough, as the world has sped up, industrialised, standardised and offered mass production of tea, and the consumption of tea. Um, in China, its production has remained largely unchanged to this day. So they continue to use these traditional organic manual practices to create whole leaf teas, which preserves the levels of positive nutrients within the leaf. Whereas most countries in the world machine harvest, because obviously it's much more economic to do that, um, but this chops up and damages the tea and reduces the qualities um, intrinsic to the leaf. And in China, tea production has always placed this huge significance on the harmonious relationship between man and nature. As you can see, um, actually is what the symbol for tea in China means. It's man in his rightful place on earth. And if you think about it, to have that hot brew, it, that relationship is essential between man and nature. So when we go on to reflect our relationship with tea in the UK and the low quality of the cheap tea bags that have now become our nation's favorite version of this drink, we kind of have to ask how we lost our deep connection to this wonderful gift from nature because we no longer seem to revere or honor it in the way that the Chinese still do. 
And to find the answer, we must surely begin with the famous act of corporate espionage carried out in 1848 by the British when they sent Sir Robert Fortune on a covert mission to steal the secrets of tea production and harvesting from the Chinese. And over seven, several years, I mean, amazingly, because, because no one really traveled then, he was able to convince them that he was a Chinaman who'd come from a different part of China. Um, but over several years, he successfully managed to smuggle thousands of the finest tea seeds from China to India. And what this did was allow the British to create a very lucrative competing um, not, um, tea production operation in India and actually was a massive uh, influence in aiding the rise of the British Empire. But it also ended China's monopoly on tea and really critically damaged their economy. And this deliberate theft of the tea plants by the British with the sole intention to commoditize the plant meant that the spirit and sanctity of the tea drinking experience never really left China. And the British established these vast tea plantations in India on an industrial scale that over time allowed us to gradually be weaned onto greatly inferior tea and then today's cost effective tea bag option. I'm just going to finish that screen share. Sorry, thank you. Um, and Attic, we don't just work with tea because it tastes nice, although hopefully you will find at least one of them that you love. We believe that teas, especially these teas from China, these really beautiful, handcrafted, hand harvested teas, can really help us embrace a more consistent, positive level of health and well being. And we're going to look at that through the process of tasting today. So I hope you're going to be inspired to add some delicious tea into your daily lives. So we're going to begin with the tasting. And the idea really with tasting is um, we use palate to access the ourselves, because when you drink something with um, con with a conscious awareness, you can actually feel it every layer of your of your being. But taste and how how you how it makes you feel is the easiest way to access that so that's why we use palette and we have tried many different ways to find the best ways to match people to tea and palette is definitely the best so um also within your your kits you probably did have a little tasting note set you might want to um look at this as we go along through the tasting and just to say, because it is evening, normally, obviously, I'm doing these earlier in the day. And when you're drinking tea yourself, you're only going to be drinking one tea and then reusing the leaves all day. Um, if you are really caffeine sensitive, you can always rinse, like put a bit of water on the leaves for a cup for maybe 10 seconds and empty the water out and it will wash out most of the caffeine and then top it up again. If you're really sensitive and you don't really want to now drink five amounts of caffeine but we are going to look at how different tea caffeine is to coffee caffeine but I just thought I'd reference that if there's anyone who's going to be like up all night if they if they drink too much caffeine um let me just check there's no questions okay brilliant so we're going to start with the white tea so if you all grab your little pack um I would suggest we're only going to make because we're going to be trying all five of these teas I would suggest probably only making like a couple of inches, like half a pot of tea, each tea. We would normally say like about, start with about a heat teaspoon, but maybe, maybe just, um, I would go like, maybe like a, a biggish pinch. Because you're actually tasting the tea, you do want it quite strong, maybe stronger than you would drink it in your everyday. But um, you, there is enough in that little pack for at least three pots. So you can always go back, another day and maybe try them one at a time and um, if you're if you don't want to make it too strong today the other thing I would note is the first uh, the white green and oolong teas are best brewed slightly under boiling so what I would suggest is either putting about a centimeter of cold water on top of the tea before you pour the boiling on or putting the boiling on and then putting a little bit of cold water in there just to reduce it to about 80 degrees 
So I'm just going to give you all like a couple of seconds to either top up your pot or go to the kitchen and get get some water from the kettle. And um, we will return back here with our pots. So all I would say with this teapot is fill it up, but do not touch the bottom of the pot because that is how you release the tea. And you will only burn yourself once, but it's best not to do it at all. So ideally just top it up, but hold it with the handle. And we will meet back here in a couple of seconds. Thanks. I've got mine. I've done mine. <laughs> I've got some cold water as well, like you said. Yeah, just um, I have a temperature controlled kettle, so <laughs> times that um, yeah. I just put a bit of cold in, like you said. There we go. So I'm not totally sure if you're all back with your pots, but I'm going to start timing this. The white tea takes about three to four minutes to get the first brew out and um, what you'll find as you reuse the tea leaves they need less time to brew um, it's almost like some of them need to activate first but while we're waiting for the tea to brew let's just have a little quick look at the reason we only focus on these um handcrafted teas from china i mean we've talked a little bit i've looked a little bit about you've got a question oh sorry yeah the rev the reverence of it sorry Oh, the quality of tea. Well, do you know what we, someone has just asked about the tea in Cornwall. We, when we had the tea shop, we did actually sell it for a little while. It's extremely um, expensive because obviously they probably don't get a massive harvest, but um, I imagine it's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I don't really, um, I think it's an amazing thing. I think they tried to replicate the, the, Darjeeling, I think it has the similar kind of because it's by the water and stuff. I'm not totally sure. I remember reading the story about it, but yeah, it's a good point. And I think they do tend to sell mainly black tea, I would say, like a more traditional breakfast tea. Um, but thank you for that question. Um, yeah, so we work, we work mainly only with the Chinese teas because when you look at the research on the tea plant it contains a host of useful um, beneficial vitamins minerals antioxidants amino acids that all are found to really support the optimal functioning of our bodies but what they've discovered is the level of these positive nutrients are much higher in whole leaf teas and the only way you can get a whole leaf tea is by hand picking it so even when you go to the supermarket and buy a loose, I don't know, Assam or something, when you open the box, it's still very little chopped up bits. It's not as dusty as like in a tea bag, but it's chopped up. And that's because when you machine harvest, you can't get those whole leaves. Um, so that because we have always promoted health, tea for health, really, rather than just flavor, we've only ever used these really high quality teas because of because of that. But actually, when you use them properly and you're re-steeping them, uh, you know, throughout the day, they don't end up being like expensive like people think. Like a bag of tea from us would last you easily a month, even if you're drinking, you know, three or four cups a day because you just re-steep the same same tea. So, um, and beyond the the beneficial nutrients, what it does is, as you will see with this white tea, is it really slows down the amount of time it takes to brew the tea so when you make a tea bag tea you tend to leave it in for about 30 seconds whereas with these holy teas they take about three minutes and um, what this means is a lot more of the positive nutrients will pass into the cup you're about to drink but also as I was mentioning caffeine earlier when you re-steep the tea the caffeine's so water soluble they think about 90% of it comes out in your first cup so if you are quite caffeine sensitive, it's a really good way to not have any more caffeine through the day. And um, they have about a fifth of the caffeine that's in a tea bag tea. 
because there's just a lot less tea in there. So the one, some of you might be ready to pour. Once the tea is the color of basically champagne, it's ready to pour and you just sit it on top of your cup. I've got a glass here so you can see. And the pressure pushes the plate up and it will just pour the tea straight into the cup for you. So that's why you want to make sure you've got a cup that suits. I've thought that very, very full. So in China, they slurp the tea. So feel free because I can't hear any of you to aerate it as you're tasting it. The other reason we use Chinese tea actually is um, because the Chinese uses really clever processing methods to make five different types of tea, white, green, oolong, black and pu'er. And obviously most countries in the world just focus on one, like Japan focuses on green tea and India obviously focuses on black tea. Um, and what's great about having five teas from the same plant all with different tastes and different actions is it stops us having to match people as a one size fits all. Um, it, we found that it's we're much it's much easier to find teas that are specifically balanced and harmonize each person as you um, will find the ones that resonate most with you through the tasting. So let's look at the white tea, silver needle. Um, so white tea is just um, the buds of the tea plant. So they pluck really pure white tea like we sell, the silver needle. Um, and you might find smelling the leaves now they've brewed is quite a, a nice introduction to before you taste it because your taste and smell are so connected. Um, and what they do with the white tea is they just pluck the buds and lay it out to dry naturally in the air. So it's kind of raw, raw until you put the hot water on it. Um, and it's just the youngest buds. You can buy white tea. Some white teas have the first leaf and the bud, um, but they taste a lot more green um, because obviously they have some of the leaf as well. What we found interestingly is some teas seem to suit certain personality traits. Um, and when we look at them in terms of uh, the Chinese five element system, it's quite easy to understand why that might be so. Um, so when we're looking at white tea and we look at the people often it really suits, they tend to be those very organized, very capable, dependable type people that um, like rules and structure and have never have to ask twice to do things. They're very, very capable doers. So maybe if you're one of those sorts of people, you might find that this really suits you. And um, and in terms of the imbalance of that, often it's a tea that's really nice if you're feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed because it's a very calming. I use it a lot for anxiety um, and people that run on nervous energy because it has a very strengthening, calming effect on the body. And so feel free to uh, post any. Um, any thoughts on the white tea as we're going along? That tea maker is so satisfying <laughs> when you put it on the cup and it's just so satisfying the way the water just goes straight through. Did you invent that? No, I wish we had. <laughs> I didn't know it by now. No, um, but we've, I mean, we've had our business for 15 years and we, this is the only tea making um, pot we've ever sold. And We've tried loads of different things. I just don't think the tea tastes as good as it does from this. And it's a BPA free. Most of our clients use them all day, every day. So we didn't want a glass. We've tried glass um, ourselves and they just break too easily. It's really durable, but also it aerates the tea as it pours out. And it, you know, like if you go to the Middle East, they always pour tea from a height and it just definitely improves the flavor of the tea. Um, and obviously it's just really easy to re-steep. You just top it up all day, um, the same maker and the same leaves. Um, whereas I think often with pots, the leaves get stuck or they come out into the, you know, if you're filtering them. And, um, yeah, so the other thing, I, I suppose I was a little bit concerned about, you know, you hear a lot about plastic leaching. So that doesn't, this, this, this doesn't, is a BPA free plastic. Yeah. yeah. So that is not, a, not anything for anyone to worry about. Cause yeah, that's what you hear about, isn't it? Yeah. That issue. And I do that. I have um, these little tea balls. So they're like this, but they're just made into balls. And I put them in in the morning and I just fill it up all day. And I didn't realize 
about the caffeine. So that's a revelation as well. That you know, the first time you you kind of wash all the caffeine out, and then that's. And I we will look a little bit, but I will just touch on that because the caffeine is one of those things that comes up quite a lot because obviously. Um, people got quite interested in herbal. We do have a herbal range, but um, people got quite interested in herbal tea because it doesn't have caffeine in it. But they think that, that a tea bag tea has about five times the caffeine of a whole leaf version of the same tea. And that's because if you think about how, if you ever open a tea bag, it's like dust. So the surface area of a, of a, a tea bag tea is enormous. And if caffeine's the most soluble thing and you don't leave the tea bag in, I mean, the BBC did an experiment and they were like, you have to leave a tea bag in for seven minutes to get all the goodness out of the tea. And it, it is almost undrinkable at that point. So um, what we find is people tend to do it, throw it away and then start afresh. So you're just spiking caffeine all day and it's not had enough time to let any of the other nutrients that we're going to look at in a minute. Um, Charlie's got a question here she's got a kettle with different temperatures what temperature is the best to use oh so white tea i would say about 80 lucky you nothing better than a temperature controlled kettle i'm writing notes in my in my notes that that is get having this i'm quite organized so probably i like this one but that has a very similar kind of background note to chamomile doesn't it so really interestingly, I think people that suit this tea really taste it. Um, in China, they say you have to coat your throat with it before you can taste it um, because it's like an aftertaste. It's so delicate. But a lot of people, they just are like, it just tastes like wa hot water. So it's really interesting because actually a lot of people I know who drink just hot water, they move to white tea because they like the fact that it's not too strong. So it's the tea I drink all the time at the moment. Yeah, I love the you said the colour of champagne. Oh, you had me at colour of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy <Help> champagne. <laughs> That's it. It's the colour of champagne. It's definitely my tea. So did anyone like this tea? Yeah. What is, what are everyone's thoughts about that one? I really like that one. It's very as I say, it's got a real back note of chamomile for me that I can really It probably would be the little what I know of you, Leslie, is probably definitely one I would have Thought might suit you actually yeah it is um i really like that I really like anyone that. who could arrange a month-long um experience like you have is definitely a white tea person <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am super organized yes exactly it's perfect for you there you are sophie's saying i've always really disliked white tea but this one is delicious it is delicious and i think what you were saying about the fact that these are le tea leaves, they are the actual leaves, and they're not the tea dust. It's quite a different thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's because things like white and green tea were never really invented to go into tea bag because they don't suit that. It, they brew wrong, so they brew really strong. Um, and unfortunately, that has been quite a challenge for us because obviously everyone's tried green tea and tea bag. It was really disgusting. Yeah. Um, but what I would also say, Sophie, is even just having cooler water makes a difference um i think if you put boiling water on these leaves it would taste different you can try it um at some point as well yeah so shall we move on? did anyone have any other questions about white tea i mean obviously you can go back and retaste them all because there's loads of tea in that bag and there's obviously the tasting notes here um we kind of just touch on um the energy of the tea as well through the animal spirit and um through the sense of the season. Um, so it's a very good releasing tea. So it's very cleansing. Um, we were touching on as well the graphics on your, weren't we, just before we went live. I was saying, I think the, the graphics are really, um, they really do embed your message, your brand. Yeah, and I was saying actually to Leslie that we were very fortunate to have a, a barista who came to work for us when we had the tea shop who happened to be an, an insanely good <laughs> illustrator. So she created all those whilst in between making coffees for people, so <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so we're gonna move on to green tea. I know some of you will already be like, I know I don't like green tea, but it's really good to try this one because this is as good as it gets. And if you don't like this, it's because green tea isn't probably the right tea for you. Um, so again, in the tea maker, you might, it's entirely up to you. You might want to um, em empty the leaves into a cup and use them again. 
um, or it's entirely up to you, but we're going to do it. You need about the same amount with the green tea. Um, so as you can see, they're quite flat leaves. So I would just pick a, a decent enough pinch. Green tea is a one tea that doesn't suit being overly brewed. So um, if you guys want to just, again, at, at 80 degrees and just let me know when you're brewed up. And do, I we will... empty, do we empty these leaves out? Or do we yeah, empty... you could empty those ones out. But if you want to put them in a cup or something and come back to them, it's entirely up to you. Because um, obviously you could reuse them, um, but you might find with the teas you've got once you've done the tasting that each day you pick a different one and then just drink it all day yeah. um, and see how that goes for you. Just trying to get the tea leaves out. Right. Okay. So the, the way I found easiest if you're using a tea maker is to turn it upside down and just shake it and they'll, most of them will fly straight out into your compost bin or whatever you're using. So we're doing 80 degrees again on this. Yes. Okay. I'm not a fan of green tea, so this will be interesting, won't it? Yeah, and I find people that, that aren't, I mean, it's good to try it not in a tea bag, but people that aren't green tea people, I find tend to love the white or the oolong generally, um, which is either side of it, because they're much smoother. Does this one look like champagne? Because if it doesn't, it's probably not going to be for me. <laughs> Sorry, no, it doesn't. It looks like stock. <laughs> so we did mention, oh, when you've done that, I'll start timing that. So green tea, like I said, is the one, one that and black tea are the ones that aren't great if you overbrew the first steep. So we will maybe try it at about two minutes two and a half minutes instead of three. So while we're waiting, I just wanted to look a little bit about why holy Chinese teas actually help us respond better to stress. And I touched briefly on her herbals. Um, there is a reason we separate our herbal blends from our Chinese, pure Chinese teas. And um, this is because most herbals will fall into what we call um, medicine, medicine plants, medicinal plants. And what they do is they all have these abilities to cure or lessen symptoms of something you already have. So a symptom you already have. So, for example, you might choose to drink mint because you've got stomach ache or um, chamomile because you have sleep problems. And this is sort of, so they're very specific. So if you look at our herbal range, they're, they're named for what they're gonna do because they have specific purpose, I suppose. And they're reactive. So they tend to be something that will bring you back into balance if you've gone out of balance. Whereas the tea plant is known as a tonic plant, and this is quite an elite class of plants. And um, they're called adaptogens because they actually help your body navigate mental and physical stress. And so they're much more holistic in the way they work and proactive. So they, their job is really to prevent illness before it, it occurs rather than mend you once you're bit, you've gone out of balance. So they have a different role to the herbals. And on a very basic level, the human nervous system has two states, two stress response states. The sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight stress response, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest, relax, digest, thrive response. And the fight or flight response is your body's way of responding to imminent threat and protects you and saves your life. And it releases stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline deliberately to help you focus you know, get all the energy to your body so you can run, fight, climb up a tree or whatever you need to do. Um, so so you might want to try the green tea now. If you if you started brewing it when I started timing it, um, give it a go because it probably be strong enough. Um, what I will say about the green tea, we will just finish this bit and then I'll come back to tasting the green tea, but it's quite savoury and I think that's why people struggle with it a little bit in our culture because we're used to putting milk in our tea, which sweetens it. Um, but just quickly looking back at the stress response. Um, so the rest, relax, digest response is our thrive state because it's where we support our natural drive 
to heal and function well. So it encourages all our long-term systems to work better. Our digestive system, our immune system, helps us get more restful sleep. And obviously we are designed as humans to move between the two quite seamlessly when we need it. So, you know, if you see an imminent threat, feel an imminent threat, like you're about to get run over, you know, you should be able to flip back into your stress response very quickly. But unfortunately what's happened in our modern lives is we spend a lot of time worrying about perceived threats or potential problems. And our nervous system can't actually tell the difference between an emotional trigger like a fight with your partner or a mountain of bills or a work deadline um, and a, a really true imminent threat like you're about to get eaten by a lion. So when we get stuck in these chronic stress states, um, it can have really serious effects on our on our health problems, on our health, because when you're super stressed, your body is like, let's shut down everything that is not essential for you to survive. And that obviously is things like your digestive system, your immune system, which unfortunately are all the systems that are essential for your long term health. So that's why a lot of people do notice that they have weight problems or they get ill more if they're stressed a lot of the time. So really, when we're looking for improving our health and well-being, we're looking at a more balanced way to respond to stressors in our lives. And one way to do this is through these tonic plants, because that's their job, is to help your body adapt to the external and internal environment. And obviously the tea plant of all of them is probably the most accessible. You know, it's things like ginseng and licorice, which you might have occasionally, but the tea you can just integrate into your life. OK, so green tea. Let me just see what the questions are. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, France, really interesting you say that, because when I was doing a tasting the other day, someone did say they wish they'd had a bit of a, 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 like some water or something in between. So feel free to do that if um, that feels right. So green tea, as I said, is it's a bit like the Marmite of teas. And I think it's because it's. It's, it, it, well, if you ever go to a Chinese restaurant, they always give you green tea. It's so good for helping your body digest fat and foods, you know, it just helps. It's really, really digestive. And what I've also found is a lot of people that have tried drinking green tea, they might drink it first thing in the morning and feel like a bit nauseous. And that's because if you haven't eaten anything, your body is like, oh, um, just going to digest what that tea is just going to start digesting and there's nothing in your system to digest so if you do find that green tea can make you feel a bit nauseous try not eating drinking it on an empty stomach so what are the thoughts on the green tea i saw that fran thought it was quite clean she thinks it's clean someone says does the water does the actual water make a difference to the taste yeah absolutely um i only know this because my friend came up from London the other day um, and we were drinking white tea and she was saying how, because oh, we only use filtered water, but also we live in Bristol. So I think the water's quite soft. Um, so I think it does have a massive impact. Um, if you can filter your water, I think it would probably taste better. Yeah. Um, I was expecting, because as I said to you, I'm not a fan of green tea because it normally makes my eyes twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's just normally like just too strong too strong and eye twitchy eyes and so I kind of went towards the cup thinking okay brace brace and took the mouthful and thought well wow <laughs> that's obviously what it's meant to taste like it didn't make my eyes twitch at all but normally <laughs> like oh no that's really nasty I don't like it and I know it's so good for you and I know it's really good to have green tea as you say with a meal um, especially Chinese food which is I can't eat Chinese food anyway but um, I know it's really good for you but I just couldn't I couldn't tolerate it and yet that is just I think Annie says she's made her green tea quite weak and it's smooth and I think I've probably done the same Annie because I haven't used that much yeah and I think with green tea you don't need very much and it's interesting you say that about a lot of people we meet have, are like, I know I should drink green tea because it's really good for me. But what we try and do with these five teas is they all are from the same plant. So they all have 
the same things that you need from them. So it's not a question of thinking green tea is better than white tea. They all are the same. So, and they're all as good a quality as each other. So actually, if you find that you prefer white tea, it's, it's gonna do everything that the green tea is gonna do. In fact, better because it's the one that's most matched to your constitution. So don't worry if you don't aren't a fan of any of the teas. It's very unlikely that you'll like them all. They're all quite different. Um, but it is quite good to try them all in succession because then you will see the difference between them. What I'm now calling the champagne tea is definitely my favourite at the moment. <laughs> oh, yes, don't really like it, no. So does anyone else have any thoughts on the... Uh, on the um... so Sophie's saying it's so different from tea bags, which absolutely... Yeah. Um, Fran, it's better drunk in China cups. Absolutely, Fran. <laughs> we, do you know what, Fran? We always drink everything out of a glass. And I think it's just, um, there's something lovely about the, the lightness of the colours of the tea as well. And you'll see they're all completely different colours as well. Like the pu'er is really dark. Um, but there's something about that as well. So I tend to drink in glass. But I know that traditionally, yeah, really good quality China I'm sure yeah. some of you. Annie's got a bit confused. I'm sure some of you artists have got amazing. You've probably made your own. Annie's got a bit confused by this. What do you mean? It's the same. Surely they are different plants. No. So. So sorry. Yes. So um, let me just answer that. Let me answer that while we put the oolong on because it takes quite a while to brew this one. So, okay. um, if, when you're ready, you'll see that the oolong tea is is in tiny little looks like little balls, but actually they're leaves that they've hand curled together. So you don't need very many, just a little small pinch, like half a teaspoon. Um, I'm just doing your shaking method. Yeah, try the shaking method. <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, so in terms of, yeah, so they're, so sorry, they are made from one plant, the Camellia sinensis, the plant I showed you right at the beginning. But what happens is they use different processing methods to make each tea. And sorry, I, this is actually critical and I should have mentioned it as we moved on to the green tea. So like I said, the white tea, they just pluck the buds and they allow it to dry. And then once the buds open into leaf, it becomes all the other types of tea. So um, let me just say the oolong, ideally a little bit under boiling. It, it won't be as ruined as the white and green. So you could maybe do it a bit hotter, like 90 or something. And um, so if you, when, I'm just gonna start that. Is yours, tell me when yours is done, Leslie, and then I'll start the timer. So when you cut an apple and it goes brown, that process of the enzymes in the apple mixing with the oxygen in the air, um, and it's called oxidation. And that is the process they use to make tea. So with green tea, which we've just had, in China, they use a wok. In Japan, they use steam. And they kill all the enzymes in the plant before it has time to oxidize at all. So green tea is green. So it's like the apple before you cut it. And, it, um, and, and then black tea they roll the leaves and release all the enzymes and allow it to fully oxidize which is why it's brown like the apple goes and um oolong which we're about to drink sits right in the middle so some oolongs are quite green because it depends when they stop the ex oxidation process so oolongs are classed as semi-oxidized teas black tea fully oxidized green tea unoxidized and then oolong semi-oxidized and so the oolong we're drinking today is a um is the green end shall i start the timer start Hopefully. the timer <laughs> and um you can get much darker oolongs that are nearer the black tea end but we found they're absolutely delicious but they're quite hard to drink in any volume and i think they almost shot them like espresso they're very potent and they're very rich um, but very delicious if you ever get a chance to try one. Um, but as obviously we're incorporating tea drinking for hydration and for like re-steeping the leaves, just having a little shot isn't quite
quite so we went for a, for a lighter end oolong and it is apart from the mixture of all this is by far our best selling tea so it'll be interesting to see what you all think about it and i think it's because it has the lightness of a green tea without the that astringent aftertaste but did anyone absolutely love the green tea So if it's really interesting you say that because actually that's what the, the English thought. That's why they sent Robert Fortune over to China and they didn't know that it was just one plant. He could have been in and out in a weekend, couldn't he? Could have just been a day. Yeah. It was three years it took him. Three years. <laughs> three years. And he was there. I think he, he, he was clearly a malingerer. <laughs> He was I think he was having a great time, yeah. He enjoyed pretending to be a Chinaman. Um, he did not look anything like a Chinese man, but I suppose, yeah. as you say, because we didn't have the internet or there was no travelling, no one would know if he said, I'm from a different part of China. It's really? a vast country. So Hildegard and Griselda Lay loved it. So yeah. actually, um, I think there's something about green tea, the people that love it, because it is, I absolutely adore green tea, but I also love other bitter things like kale and dark chocolate and so i think there's um they think that bitter taste at the back of your throat triggers bile production in the body so it actually does have a specific digestive process and i think if you love it it's probably because your body's like oh yeah come on you know so i think i love vincent's comment it's like if it's good i suppose if it's, it's like medicine if it tastes if it's good for you Absolutely. Smoke kippers. <laughs> it's like smoke kippers. Yeah, I'm not keen on green, but that I could tolerate that. I'd just make it very, very, very weak, I think. Very weak. Well, you only have to like really find one that you actually, but, but ideally you want to really like it if you're going to drink it every day. So yeah. I'm yeah. definitely with the white tea at the moment, but we'll see how we go with this one. And you can probably see the oolong leaves starting to unfurl so a bit like the white tea oolong often takes a little bit longer to get going because it needs to open up but once the leaves are open let's have a look at yours leslie oh uh there can you see so yours has opened hasn't it so once it's opened you can strain it okay. and it should be like the color of like olive oil this is my favorite bit <laughs> all day <laughs> if you get a good gadget <laughs> love a good gadget yes it, that looks a bit more the leaves look because they were like very crispy when we put them in there weren't they and now that looks a bit more like a herb like mint or something doesn't it yeah and when it opens up it um it means it does actually it, it almost delays the brew so you normally can get more good cups out of the oolong than the others in a way because it's taken extra dose almost to get it to get it down I love that, Annie. Shit, it's, the teapot's like an aquarium. It's so is. There could be fish in there. I mean, to be completely honest, we also were, in the way that we only have clear packaging, we were like, the tea is so beautiful. It doesn't make sense not to see it when you brew it. And so many teapots you don't, you know, it's like such a lovely thing to look at as well. And the paper that you've got your tea in. So is this all like... That's a glassine. Yeah, that's a compostable packaging. Compostable packaging as well yeah right i'm gonna go in i'm going in give that a go and just just so i just wanted to look should I smell the leaves first should i smell the leaves first is that a good thing oh yeah do do that always if you want to um i just wanted to quickly touch on um the anti-stress effects i was talking about with the tea why chinese tea in particular is so good for this is that especially whole leaf chinese tea um you know, I said it's got all these healthful nutrients, but it's higher in these really high quality Chinese teas. Most notably, an amino acid called L-theanine, which they're doing so much research on. I think soon you'll be able to buy it in Holland Barra as a, as a supplement. And what they found is that it, it actually reduces cortisol levels in the blood. So even if you are stressed, it really helps bring you back to your rest, relax, digest response much more quickly. Um, it also, this L-thionine has also been found to increase bra alpha brainwave activity, which again is something that connects you to that more calmer state. And this is, I think, why most people notice improvements in their digestion, sleep and energy levels first when they start to drink these um, teas regularly. But also the combination of the 
um, caffeine and antioxidants has been found to exacerbate that experience. So it, it is good to have that little bit of caffeine in the tea because it actually amplifies the effects of of this calming um negating the kind of stress response and they've also found that um l-thionine crosses the blood brain barrier and raises and regulates the levels of serotonin and dopamine in the brain and these are neurotransmitters that are essential for our mood and our motivation but interestingly and we will look at this when we get to the meditation part what this unique action does in the brain by raising serotonin and dopamine is it synchronizes the effects of the brain hemispheres which um we will see later is essential for gaining healthy perspective um, and functioning properly in the world um so obviously drinking these teas is just helping shift you into that more balanced state more regularly which is kind of what most of us need at the moment yeah, so we're on T3 Oolong, and Hildegard's just asking which one are we going to do next. She's obviously preparing ahead. Um, so I'm saying actually all the teas have an anti-stress effect because they all contain this nutrient called Arthione. So we don't, so when we, when you look at the herbal mixtures, that is where we separate the strands of each tea. So for example, the immunity and brain boosting blends, herbal blends, have green tea in them because green tea is known to boost your immune system and stuff. But when it comes to choosing a tea to drink as your kind of core everyday tea, we don't separate their individual benefits because actually it's about matching resonant matching the tea with you and your constitution and your needs and your palate so all of them have the same effects on each person it just might be a different tea that you need depending on your personality if that makes sense so they will all have those nutrients that will help manage stress better and put you in a more balanced state um like all things where we have we're all we're all unique and we've all got our unique tendencies and so you know what works for one person won't work for another and what one person might meditate by sitting in a room another one might go and walk in a wood or have a shower or whatever you have to find the thing that works for you none of them are right or wrong it's just what resonates and works for you and you're saying that with the tea these teas are all from the same plant they've all gone through a different process and you need to find the one that you go yeah i'm that's and still i'm still with the white one um, and the processing will affect the obviously the chemical balance in the tea but it is beyond that it's a you know they're, they're different they're different time amount of time they're allowed to grow on the tree you know there's all these different factors that yeah so that's why we find the one that resonates most with you because you know we're such a heady mix of like our constitution, our genetics, you know, what's going on for us at the moment, how stressed we are, you know, all these things. And this just bypasses us trying to navigate those because your palate will just tell you what your body needs. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's the internal and external environments, isn't it? And this, these just go across that to bring it all back into balance. Yeah. So Edith likes green tea so far. Hildegard still needs to know what one is happening after Oolong. Where oh, going? sorry, black. black. Black next, Hildegard. She's very organised. She Hildegard created the magazine. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. So very organised. So black. you should be with me on the white. Very team. creative. <laughs> Which one has the most caffeine? Okay, so this is quite interesting, Sophie, because um, they can't... So it's always been assumed that the more processed the tea, the more caffeine. But that isn't true necessarily because it depends on the harvest. It depends on the soil. It depends on so many things. What I would say is if you are very caffeine sensitive, um, you might find. So the, the L-thionine in the tea has a relaxant effect. It's an, an amino acid that relaxes the body. So when it meets the caffeine, it changes the way your body will synthesize the caffeine. So you shouldn't get that jittery from a whole leaf tea that you might do from a tea bag tea um, because you've got these other nutrients as well. Not only has it got less caffeine, but you've got all these other nutrients that will temper the way your body reacts to the caffeine. Um, 
So, but like I was saying, if you are really caffeine sensitive, you can always wash the leaves before you start. And that just means kind of throwing away, like brew it for like 20, 30 seconds and throw that away and it will reduce the amount of caffeine in the, in the tea. I mean, in China, they wash the tea. They always do that, especially in ceremony. But um, yeah, obviously that's not, that's not how we, you know, that's only to, as, a, as almost like, because they have that, that really, that sort of relationship with the plant. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do that if you find that the caffeine's still affecting you. I'm not keen on the oolong. And you said that one was the most popular. Yeah. But, but only, I think, because a lot of people who want to drink green tea find the oolong really much easier to drink. Who... I need the caffeine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, any of these teas will just balance, over time, balance out your energy levels, so you won't... Everything should improve, so you can get more energy from your food because you're digesting better. You should sleep better, yeah, etc. So hopefully, after a couple of weeks, you would notice that you're just you don't need the hit. And we will talk about caffeine in a minute, actually, as we're brewing up the black. Um, did anyone have anything? So, what were thoughts on the oolong? So you got who? Something like, uh, Andy loves the oolong. Plug my computer in to charge for a bit before. I don't want it to go dead in the middle of the meditation. That would be quite awkward. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an awkward moment. You get to see all the art in my house. Look. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to empty this one out now. I'm going to do my shake and vac. <laughs> I found really like you long. So Angela really liked you long. I mean, it's really interesting because you'll probably find all of you will like different things, which is why it's so brilliant this five. Yeah. And the one that we've got here that says all the tea in China, is that like your own blend? Yeah. And that's got all of them mixed together. Uh, and is that quite popular? Uh, so that is our best-selling tea. But, the blend. Um, but you'll see when you try it, it tastes like tea with milk. So it's so familiar, but it has all the health benefits of all these teas. So it's a really good. Uh -huh. Right, I've emptied that one out. Fran like you long too. Yeah, it's a and it's really interesting because you can't. It's so specific your own palate. So that I really noticed it the white tea, like I said, because people, some people can't taste it at all. But that's why you have to, it's so good to do a tasting because you can't, you can't tell what someone else will, how they'll experience each tea. Okay, so we're gonna do the, um, actually, so this is a question. We've got the, the you black now. I've just put my black tea in the thing. Okay, let's just do the black tea. <laughs> Black tea's boiling. Boiling. Okay. Boiling. It's boiling. I put it onto boil. I'll let you know when I've boiled the black tea. Just, just, making, just making a dreadful mess on my desk. I just wanted to do a quick nod to the caffeine because um, because yeah. a few people had mentioned it. So in terms of coffee, so we've talked about the stress response and we're trying to find practices that reduce our, well, help us manage our stress, maybe respond to our stressors better. And... What was Sophie was saying? I need the caffeine. Just um, so caffeine is this great nervous system stimulant. It will give you an instant. If we all know what it feels like when you have a coffee and you just feel like what, um, and it's fine for you in tiny amounts. But unfortunately, most of the drinks, like if you drink a few tea bag tea cups of tea a day or coffee, like especially espresso coffee, it's very very high in caffeine. And what this does, can it, it actually triggers the stress response in your body. So it it's triggering the production of cortisol. And this is why when you often have a coffee, you feel really alert, focused and energized is because that is the stress response, because that has set your body up ready to fight the lion, run away from the lion or climb the tree. 
And it's a, so it is actually you are triggering that response in your body. And you know that because after a while, once the threat, perceived threat has passed, then suddenly you will. Sorry, Leslie, should I put that on? Yes, please. You will um, get this like um, crash, almost like a crash, because obviously when you have a stress response, the idea is it's just last enough for you to run away and climb up a tree or whatever. And that process of action burns off the cortisol. And so your body, when the stress has passed, when the threat has passed, your body will then just slip back into your rest, relax, digest response. That's how it's supposed to work. But obviously when you're at work and you've drunk a coffee and you're really, you're like a shaken up Coke bottle because you haven't gone out for a run on that, feeling um so often people find that's you know that's when they get a real crash and then they need another coffee or whatever cup of tea to get them back up so if you find that you're using caffeine for stress you might find it's sort of there might be a better solution because it's actually probably exacerbating it rather than I hope that makes some sense anyway. So I also like the silver needle. I drink it after supper and of my mm, nice. It's a bit like that thing when people say, I really need sugar, isn't it? And actually, that's the absolute opposite of what you actually need. And it is a cycle. I mean, it's um I do a lot of work on the health cycle, and you realize you only need to change one thing. So say, so say you've had a really bad night's sleep. And you wake up that's when you're most likely to make terrible decisions on what to eat or drink because you're tired and that will then have a knock-on effect in your on your blood sugar or you know your mood and then that might make you less likely to go on that run that you normally do or go to your yoga class because you're like oh just can't be bothered and then that's going to affect your sleep so so the cycle looks kind of quite hard to break but actually if you just went made a different decision on what you ate or drank in the morning and balanced your blood sugar then you'd have more energy and you'd be in a better mood and then you're more likely to do your gym class and then you're more likely to have a better sleep so you can see you don't actually have to change much many habits to really have a massive impact on on your state of well-being yeah thoughts feelings behavior just change one of them so if you've been brewing the black tea you might want to give it a go so black tea is the tea that's most going to be most reminiscent of normal tea. I find a lot of people find it quite hard to drink because it's, they're so used to putting milk in it. So see what you think on the black tea. Um, this is a, it's a really beautiful tea. I drink it um, without milk quite happily because it's actually quite sweet. It's got a sort of slightly syrupy aftertaste. Um, I brought some cold water in so I can actually drink it without scorching myself. Managed to get a bit boiling. Oh, yeah, sorry, I should mention. That's the first boiling water one. So it's that's the boiling water one, yeah, which I managed to pour onto my hand, which wasn't a very good day out. <laughs> pour the boiling water on your hand. Right, we've got a question. Can you put milk in it? Do you know what? That, that we're the only country in the world that put milk in tea. Um, apart from the, in India, they, use, they do boil up milk with their chai. And... I think it's because we don't really use tea as a health tonic because they think they think that milk lines the digestive tract and stops nutrient absorption. But to be honest, I never I do what you like with it. You know, I'm like it, it, I never tell people not to put milk or sugar or whatever they want to do with it. But because we're introducing it as a health tonic, we just sort of go by the kind of science of. Of, of why but I don't think it would do any harm to put milk in your tea you know if that's what you want to do and you prefer the taste of it but I would say try the mix because it tastes like there's milk in it so you might find that that suits you better because it tastes like tea with milk. Again not keen on that one. <laughs> yeah and I think um, I think it is a little bit cultural because it doesn't like I said it doesn't we're so used to that flavour being connected with the milk mm. um i don't drink milk so yeah. that's interesting i don't drink i drink oat milk but i don't drink cow's milk yeah do you drink normal tea bag tea no no yeah a lot of people that don't particularly like normal tea 
wouldn't particularly yeah. like I drink um I drink white tea like that we've just drunk over there. I drink chamomile tea, but chamomile tea flowers. Really. Yeah. Um, we have some in our sleep blend. Yeah. So just because I'm a bit aware of time, I don't know whether you want to start brewing the last tea while we just look a little bit as to um so this is the pua. meditation. This one. Which is the pua. So the pua comes as a cake. Um, it's a really fascinating tea. I would just break, if you can, just break a little bit off because you won't, it's a waste to use the whole cake um, when you're only going to have a cup. So maybe break a third of it or a half, whatever you can. Um, a very unusual tea. It's fermented tea. So they compost it in underground caves and it's probiotic. So it has this like um, really earthy taste. And try to, it, try to break it. You might find some of them a bit thinner than others. And if they yeah, are. I've managed it. I've managed it. There we are. So is this boiling water that we're putting on this? So Sophie's liked all of them. That's good. That's good news. Um, so we're putting boiling water on this one. So just to, um, yeah, so just a little bit of, so they used to use pua as currency, um, so you could buy things. So you always tend to buy good quality pua is always compressed because they, you can buy these massive cakes and they, it's the only tea that gets better with age. So they age it. I think ours is about eight years old. Um, but if you buy some that are, you know, hundreds of years old, really expensive. But um, it is a very revered tea, but quite unknown outside of China. Um, and it's like, uh, again, a bit like the green tea. It's like people who love it, that's all they drink. Um, in fact, I've been drinking pua today. Just, I don't know, just was in the mood to drink pua today. Um so while we're waiting for this tea to brew, I just wanted to look at how tea can help cultivate better mental health. We have talked a little bit about its anti-stress effects, which obviously are very important, but we've looked at it in terms of physically, like how that impacts our digestion, our immune system, that sort of thing. But there is a reason we don't have just one big splodge of brain and we have these two distinct hemispheres, left and right. And they found that but they are essential for every human activity. I'm just going to put that. Is yours um, on the brew now, Leslie? I'm just about to do it. Okay, brilliant. Um, they found that both hemispheres are used in every human activity, but they attend to the world crucially differently. And the right hemisphere has this broader attention. Um, it's somatic experiences. We appreciate our interconnectedness it um it helps us sort of feel understand the consequences of actions how they might affect other people um it's our right hemisphere that helps give us a more a bigger pick a broader picture and simply put it's it's attention pays attention to other so something everything outside of ourselves whereas the left hemisphere is necessarily, its vision is necessarily limited because it's focusing on our individual needs, our survival. So it enables us to grasp things, to make sense of the world, to manipulate it, compartmentalize it, denature it so that we can work with it. And this is obviously essential for our survival because um, we need to know how to use tools. We need to know how to manipulate things so that they you know, work for us. And so simply put, the left hemisphere pays attention to self. And to live in right relationship, we, again, should be able to synthesize from a place of balance and be able to flow into one state or the other, depending what we're working on, you know, what we need at the time. And this is known as hemispheric integration, which is something I said that, that the T naturally does for our brains because the L-thionine um, connects our brains together through its effects on our brain chemistry. But unfortunately, what seems to have happened as we learn to harvest the natural world and domesticate animals and work out that we can actually manipulate the world to our own needs is that our left, more competitive hemisphere has started to really take, take over and dominate and win out in our attention, basically. 
And what this does is that it affects, it massively impedes our quality of life experience because so much of the experiential parts of living and the joyfulness of living comes through our right hemisphere because it's felt experience. And it's, no, it's not really any coincidence that as this has built, um, as this left hemisphere bias has built, the, our mental health has started to really struggle because obviously we're no longer in right relationship with how our brains are supposed to work. Um, so we're going to drink the tea and just to sort of help kind of introduce this concept of how by having the brain bring you into balance, it's much easier to access right hemisphere practice. And as artists, you do this naturally all the time because whenever you connect to your creative process, you have to be in your right hemisphere. And obviously those things were really natural to everyone when we were just gazing at log fires or working on the land. But now we have to actively encourage these practices. So I think that's why things like mindfulness are becoming so prolific now because people, feel that need to re-engage with their, their right hemisphere and balance their brain chemistry. So um, we're going to try the pua, we're going to drink the pua, and while we drink the pua, we're going to start to get ready for a, just a gentle guided visualisation. So don't worry if you're not good at meditation, it isn't, it's literally just a visualisation and it's just a bit of fun to experience what I mean by the... Um, how you can connect the tea to a practice. And hopefully for all of you, it might be more like how it supports your creative process when you're when you're working, you know. So if you all want to pour your pua. So Annie just has a quick question. Remind me about the pua, what amount of the cake is usual? Sorry. So what amount of the oh. cake? Would you... So it's entirely up to you. If you like it strong, I mean, most of our customers that drink it a lot will just stick the whole cake in and then drink it throughout the day, um, re-steeping it. In China, they will re-steep it like 20 times because even when it loses flavour, they're like still loads of goodness in it. So they just keep going. Um, but it, um, some people will break the cake in half, use half, and then when it starts to weaken, put the other half in. So it de just depends how you like it. It's a, It's... Um, a lot lighter than it looks when you drink it. Yeah, I think it's really important that we talk more about the left and the right, right hand brain because we all have both and we're all using both, but there is a bias. And as you correctly pointed out, and it needs to be balanced and artists, especially, you know, although they're working in their right hand brain, which is the creative emotional side, are being constantly pulled to that, you know, logic side with all the marketing that they're, you know, capitalism and all the things that they're being you know insisting that they also understand and it takes them out of flow it it pushes them out of flow so if they can find a habit or a a, a vehicle to help them get that balance back so they can do all that work but not have it affect negatively impact their creativity i think that's absolutely brilliant and the most essential thing so I, how I see tea helping is I think it brings you back into balance so that whichever side you need to access is easier. So hopefully you might find meditation easier today because you've been drinking tea. Um, because obviously you need to be able to access and flow between the two. But if you're if we're all quite left hemisphere biased, then to get to the right side is a much longer, harder journey than it should be if we're in center. So, yeah. Oh, I like that one, but it's hot. <laughs> and it's hot. You know, so many people like the white and the poor together, and it's like heaven and earth because one's yeah. quite ethereal and one's really earthy and grey. Yeah, I really like that one. So I like the white and I like that one very much. Really nice, really nice tea. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go put some cold water in it. <laughs> it's just a bit too hot. So if you all want to start by... Well, actually, I don't know if any of you want to make a comment about your experience of the pua before we start the um, meditation. There is a, ch I think it is only about 10 minutes, but if any of you need to just disappear at half past, then obviously do. Um, but yeah. One question from Serena here. She's saying, just going back to all the teas coming from the same plant, does this apply to all brands of teas or just attic teas? Oh, so all, well, I mean, it depends how, Real tea, real tea, 
all comes from one plant. It's just that we've started to hijack the term tea to mean a cup of anything that's hot, that's been brewed from leaves. So um, they I call them more infusions, like if they're herbal. But if you buy a, a tea, like if it's green tea or white tea, any anywhere, if it's pure, it should be made from this one plant. It's just um, there's different... So in India, they have the Assam. So after after Robert Fortune did all that for the British, they then discovered, obviously, that the Indians already had their own indigenous tea plant. And they didn't really need to do all of that. Um, but Darjeeling tea, which is much more delicate, is made from Chinese tea plants that were stolen, whereas the Assam teas, which are much more robust, strong Indian teas, are made from their own indigenous tea plant. But it's still a genus of the same species, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it is all from it. But that doesn't include something like a mint tea or a... But if you were buying, like, I don't know, a breakfast blend of black teas, they will all be made from a, the same plant, essentially. It's just the process that they've been through. Will be yeah, different. and obviously the processing and the harvesting is done differently, and that's why these teas stand out, because they've all been handcrafted. Um it's quite a thing to get your head around, isn't it? Yeah. It is quite a big thing to get your head around because we've been commercialised, indoctrinated by the tea manufacturers who want us to just buy a blend that is just not even the leaves. It's just the dust, isn't it? So. And I will just share one story, but um, a guy, a French tea buyer, was saying when you go to the tea markets, you can always sell the British because everyone else is looking for that beautiful little artisan kilo of something that they've never tried before. And he said the British are always buying the massive crates of cheap dust from the, from the floor. Cause that's what we, that's how you make tea bags. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Sad. So that is well, it's also like a tea. We, you know, if you just drink tea for its flavor, then we, we can wind onto that. So it's fine. But because we're, saying it can be so much more the experience and what what the benefits you know it's the right thing for some people to switch it's not for everyone you know if you just like drinking a cup of builder's tea it's absolutely fine you know but we we have that health angle of like how you can actually use it to yeah it's being conscious about what you're but what you're buying so and now you're informed now you can make an informed decision as to what you want to do whether you want to buy it for just for refreshment and amusement or whether you want to buy it for the health benefits or not. And yeah, really like that one. Oh. Fab. And did it what did anyone else think of that one? So I just wanted to say as well, I haven't we haven't tasted the um mix because I knew it was evening as well. I didn't want to add another team. But I think tomorrow you should try it. So it's the, oh, the order, order. 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 Order tea is actually a mix of all five of those teas. It's our own signature blend. And um it, it just really works if you quite like if you are looking for a replacement for a builder's tea, because it just, even though it's got all these amazing teas in it, it's ended up tasting like a more traditional tea with milk. It's really interesting. So, yeah, we we sell loads of it. Yeah, it's really popular. Charlie is asking, is Ceylon tea different? It's just from Sri Lanka, isn't it? So um, it will just be their own indigenous plant, probably. Mm. But they're all the same genus of the tea plant um but it's like a hybrid version that's grown in sri lanka suitable to their soil and their climate presumably yeah and they probably had it it was probably indigenous you know that um yeah so and you know probably thailand has its own plant and borneo has its own plant and you know um i don't think anyone else particularly stole the plants i think only the british did it's only the <laughs> The I, I will i will enjoy that story for a long time who <laughs> tried to the tall white man who tried to convince that he was from a different part of china I know. Did I, by wearing a chinese outfit that so is, is everyone is everyone ready to do a little bit of a oh yeah so like i said if you do have to rush off then please do we should be conducting this in yeah, I was actually going to say whenever you're brewing the tea, you can just go for a quick wee break, <laughs> which is normally what I do. But you meant to, Annie, you're meant to be doing it like you were um, 
tasting wine. Surely you've been sipping it and spitting. Yes. <laughs> okay, so if you all want to start to settle, what I'm going to do, because... Um, so we have a crystal grid for the poor. I'm going to turn my camera so that it's so you see that because it's just a bit more interesting than looking at me. But some of you might want to. Um, so this is a Fibonacci crystal grid for this particular tea. I think that's okay. Hopefully you can still all hear me. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah. All good. Um, so I just want you to start as you're drinking your tea to. Just think of something that you're really grateful for today and just hold it in your mind as you start to just settle yourself. And we're going to do a little bit of a guided visualisation. So if you want to lie down or close your eyes or sit comfortably or put a blanket on or whatever makes you feel settled. And as you're just letting the, the poor start to work its way through your body, just think about how we're drinking this tea just to tap into the parts of us that are loving, generous, kind, caring and thoughtful. And the tea will help us feel supported and nourished. It's very earthy and solid and grounding. And I just want you to settle yourself, make yourselves comfortable. And when you are, just close your eyes and become aware of your breath. And just notice your inhales and your exhales. Every second of every day, we're in relationship with the earth through our breath. Just think of your favorite plant or tree. See its roots anchoring deep into the ground. And just imagine the plant breathing out oxygen and breathing in CO2. And then concentrate on your own breath, the breathing in oxygen and breathing out CO2. And imagine the plant breathing out oxygen and breathing in CO2. And you breathing in oxygen and breathing out CO2. And then start to imagine how your out breath becomes the plant's in breath. The plant's out breath becomes your in breath and feel the cycle of that breath. Just find the still point within yourself. Notice the energy of your breath. And allow this process to deepen down into your belly so you are breathing deep belly breaths. And start to allow your mind to shift. Feel your awareness change. Always there is the breath, the inhale and the exhale. But your awareness is more than just your focus on your breath. Deepen into your wider awareness. Notice how your body starts to relax more deeply. How you start to feel. And 
and see yourself in your mind's eye walking down towards the shoreline of a lake. See this lake. See the crystal clear waters. See the boat there waiting for you. Clamber aboard this boat. Allow yourself to drift effortlessly, leaving the shore behind. Allowing the water to take you to your destination. Take note of what moves past you. Really feel how you are leaving the past behind, leaving the everyday behind, leaving all those expectations that are placed upon you behind. And so you reach the shore and climb easily out of your boat. Feel the change as your feet touch dry land. Feel more rooted. Look around. You find yourself at a crossroads. There is a choice to be made, a path to be chosen. One path takes you back to the lake. One takes you forward and you can see the path ahead is simple, direct. Another path seems more difficult, complex, winding and twisting. And the fourth path leads upwards. Allow your intuition to choose a path and follow it. Notice how this path feels to walk. This is the road to your future. Notice how you feel about it. A guide will come to meet you. This guide is one of your spiritual teachers, maybe one you recognise, or maybe not. Make the connection and walk alongside them. Notice how you feel. Be open to their guidance. Follow your teacher until you come to a viewing place. A place where you can see your future lives. Allow yourself to see where the flow of your life is taking you. Do not be afraid. 
This is only possibility. Nothing is set as yet. Feel gratitude if your heart's desires are being realized. Give thanks for the insights you have been shown and take your leave of your guide. This teacher may have further wisdom for you. To your right there is a doorway and you know as you open this doorway it will take you back to the here and now. Be aware of the reconnection with your body mind. Start to allow a little movement. Use stronger breaths to bring your awareness back into your waking mind back into the room and when you're ready open your eyes feel free to write down anything that you wish and take a minute to come back round It was lovely and very unexpected. I'm sorry it went on a little bit over, but not too much. You're all right. You're okay. I think when you're enjoying something and people are um, enjoying the experience, um, you know, the energy takes it for as long as it needs to go, doesn't it? It was beautiful. Really beautiful. And often I don't do the meditations because I'm too worried I might fall asleep <laughs> when we do them. But I did do that one. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. That was really wonderful. Really wonderful. Well, it's been an honour to be with you all today. I've really enjoyed it. Um, and I've been very impressed with, with all that you've created, Leslie, and being able to see all the art uh, artists at work. Um, if any of you have any questions, personal questions, then please feel free to email or call me. All our details are on the Attic Tea website. Yes, as we showed at the beginning. So um, Annie was saying, just saying there that she really enjoyed it as well. It does. It really made you travel somewhere. Especially, I'll just come up and join you on the screen. Oh, no. I don't want just me. I want both of us. <laughs> that's better no one wants to see any more of me you've all had it quite enough of me i think so yeah we should all learn to relax more i think it's really important part of the process um and if you embed it with doing the tea as well it's all kind of ritualistic it becomes quite a ritual in the day and i was actually um when i do the the training um there's something about rituals that, so obviously all of the stuff we've talked about today is really comes down to the choices, our habits really, and whether we make good choices or not. And um, someone was saying that ritual is 
the way we connect to the person that we want to be because it's a chosen habit that we've honored and put in place so i think it's really important to find rituals that are that suit the the, the modern life you know and um try to hold on to them because they're what connects you to the person you you, you know you want to be yeah absolutely if you can embed some rituals into your daily life and especially ones that involve quiet and gratitude then you can't you can't be you can't be anxious and stressed when you're in a mode of gratitude and you and and ritual so it really helps you um, in this modern day when we're bombarded all the time especially at the moment because obviously everything's so digital that we're being bombarded hopefully we're starting to negotiate negotiate our way through that just to pick the things that work for us and not you know just picking everything so thank you so much Anna it's been absolutely joyful I that's been a blissful hour and 40 minutes or whatever that we've we've done it's been absolutely blissful and I I feel blessed when you said um, think about something that you're really grateful for and I and I immediately thought about the connection that we've we've made with you guys I was I'm so grateful for that and it just came about through um, thinking about our well-being and rituals really and how we could embed that further into our day and I just dropped you a message didn't I because I really connected with what you were doing so now I'm very grateful for you and for Rick and for you responding and getting involved with what we do. And hopefully when the real world happens, um, we'll be able to invite you to an event, a real life event. Wow. Imagine, Imagine that. <laughs> I know, it's going to take a, although I'm even just sitting outside now, it feels really normal, doesn't it? I thought it was going to feel really odd, but actually everything will slip back in as it should yeah i think the great the the lovely thing about feeling comfortable with sitting outside i hope we don't lose that and don't go naturally you know next year just go back inside because yeah you're 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 engaging with nature so much more and you're feeling the wind on your skin and really experiencing our world by being being made to be outside and the temperature the temperatures and it just doesn't you don't have to be hot all the time do you so thank you so much it's been an absolute thank you for having me it's been a pleasure i'm hoping that my i managed to pour boiling water on my finger <laughs> halfway through i know it's very silly have you got any lavender essential oil yeah got I, lavender oil. put it straight on it's okay i i it actually is pretty much um gone off now so i did put it straight under cold water and it's it's okay um Thank you, everybody. I'll, I'll put it in the tea. That should do it. Um, everybody, thank you so much for all of you um, joining us for the whole of this experience through April. We will be doing it again in October. Slightly different. We kind of switch it up every time. My team will all be going, <gasps> now. <laughs> but we will do it again because we won't be able to do, I don't think, big scale, large events um, this year. So we will do Art360 again in October. So we'll look forward to having another joyous month of meeting the artists in their studios and really finding out about them. And hopefully, Anna, you'll come back and see us. Tell us how you're getting on as well. That'd be lovely. So thank you. We're going to say goodbye now. And hopefully Anna's going to go and have some dinner because hopefully Rick has... <laughs> <laughs> it was sent out early doors so hopefully that's all sorted and you and you guys are all going to go off and have your dinner and uh, anyone who's a member i'll see you all on monday for the goal setting workshop at 11 30 on monday morning anyone who's joining our nft for dummies i'll see you tomorrow night at eight o'clock where we'll be learning some more about nfts and um and anyone who isn't part of the pure community, you're very welcome to join us whenever you want. We love having everybody. Okay, take care, guys, and have a lovely weekend. Thanks, Anna and Rick, so much. Bye. Bye.